Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to go through and show you how to use Apache Kafka for log aggregation. So a really common use case for Apache Kafka is to use it to consume from the, you know, potentially thousands of different systems that might comprise your backend architecture, collate it, and then, you know, uh, process it, do some pre-processing before storing it in a backend database uh, wherever you're storing all of your log information. Um, and so that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do today. I'm gonna show you how to build a Kafka script to interpret some uh, emitted data from various endpoints. I'm gonna show you a couple different endpoints uh, to simulate you know, a couple different sources of data. And then I'm gonna show you how you can set up a consumer side script to consume and aggregate that data, uh, bring it into a standard format, and then store it into a data sync. Uh, so, it's gonna be a really cool video if you're interested in learning uh, how to use Apache Kafka for log aggregation. So stay tuned and let's get into it. So here we are in handy dandy VS Code. And before we actually uh, get started uh, setting up our script, we're first just going to install a couple packages. Um, so I already have pandas, but you're also gonna to need to install a Confluent, Kafka, and uh, Panda SQL Alchemy. So I'm just gonna hit enter here. Um, and of course, so I'm gonna go install this in my Python environment, um, and then I'll meet you back and you'll open the script. So now that I have all my packages installed, I'm over here in my new Kafka file, Kafka log ag, uh, just a Python script, um, so no mussing around in Java like we had to for Flink, if you watched that video. And so here what we're gonna do is just basically produce, or create a producer script that's gonna simulate generating logs from a couple different subsystems. So we're gonna import the Kafka and Kafka producer object, uh, time, JSON, and random. All pretty self-explanatory, time setting time, JSON for interacting with uh, JSON and APIs, um, and then random for generating random numbers. And then we're just going to bootstrap a local server, localhost 9092, uh, mimicking a service that we want to monitor, maybe a backend web portal, whatever it might be. Then we're going to set that configuration as a producer object. Um, so here we're using, again, this importer producer object to create a producer that can then be recognized in our downstream consumer string. Then what we'll do is set a few different subsystems within here. So these are basically the things we want to monitor uh, and collect data on. So here we have auth, payment, search, order, and inventory. So mimicking, you know, this is a web service where maybe we're collecting information about customers, they're paying, we need to keep track of inventory. So these are the relevant categories we're gonna have here. And then we're also going to set different log levels. Um, and this will allow us to identify, hey, is this a relevant info message? Is it something that signifies there's a warning? Uh, and then we also have error logs. So if a log is generated that is an error, we can be generate alerts then based off of that. So once we're done with that, we'll then just create a function to generate a log, which is just going to generate a timestamp, some random subsystem, uh, and then some random log level. So these are different subsystems. This is gonna just choose random log level and then just give us a message. This is a log message to just simulate a log system generating a report. Next, we'll also define a delivery report object. So here saying error is none. If there, so if there is any error, then servicing that error through logs saying the log was failed to deliver. And if it was actually successfully delivered, then just printing out where that message was delivered to, which topics, this will allow you, you know, at a larger scale to keep track of which topics are monitoring for which streams, um, which offset, just really good for, you know, maintaining readability at large scale. And then once you are done with that, we'll then create, well, true, another function to tie it all together. So generating a log, producer, producing that log to our uh, topic, and then setting a producer poll, so just pinging it once, and then also just setting time to sleep. So this will continue to generate logs, essentially, so while this is true, which there's no statement that would call this not true, this is just going to consistently generate random log messages. Um, so if you're looking for an easy script to simulate uh, kind of exporting data or just simulate a producer for a Kafka script, this is a really useful tool for it. So kind of a two-pronged uh, double help will get you today. Um, and this is all you need for just our producer script, so this isn't really the interesting part of it. Um, but once we're your, it's necessary because you need to have a producer and a consumer. So now what we'll have is Kafka log ag, and we'll call this consumer.py. 
And so here, what we're gonna do is consume those logs from that endpoint um, and then aggregate them. So now here in our consumer script, we're gonna import a few of the same packages and a few new ones. So here we're gonna import consumer and also Kafka exception for us to be able to handle exceptions more gracefully. And then we're also gonna import pandas to allow us to actually start to manipulate this data and collate it and aggregate it, uh, as well as JSON, re, and SQL Alchemy create engine. Um, and so what re and SQL Alchemy create engine is first free is basically just allowing us to use regular expressions so do things like search for a given string and then sql alchemy is essentially just creating a local sql database that we're going to use to process and store this data um, so it's it's more of an application than a true database but just you know we'll call it a database for simplicity's sake here next we're going to set a consumer configuration similar to how we set our producer configuration previously so here just Bootstrap servers or localhost 9092, setting a group ID here, and then also giving it a auto offsets to search for the earliest uh, possible uh, producer generated message. Then what we'll do is similarly again, set our consumer object using that Confluent Kafka object, and then subscribe to the logs topic. So remember here, we're setting it to this logs topic. So this is setting it to consume data that is produced into the logs topic within Kafka. So now that we're subscribed to consume those log messages, we'll then set up our database. So here, just creating a local database using SQL Alchemy, uh, just you know, lightweight place to store our uh, messages and our log messages. And then we're gonna define some functions to actually clean and process these logs. So here, our defined first thing is log, uh, clean log function, where here we're just gonna delete any blank spaces, strip any messages from our logs, and only take out the relevant message uh, from our log. So collating it all into one single strip, uh, searching and using RE regular expression to pull that out and then strip it of any unnecessary information. Then once we're done, once we've pulled out the message into just kind of a raw string form and stored it into this data frame log message, we'll then process the logs. So here we're going to convert it to a data frame first. So passing the logs, converting those logs to a data frame from just an array and then perform additional cleaning. So in this example, we're just only filtering for error logs. I don't care about info logs. I don't care about warnings. I only care if there's been an explicit error in my database uh, or in the application that I'm monitoring because a lot of applications will just omit a ton of data. Um, so it's just you know an easy first step to filtering it to just the relevant information. Then what we'll do is define another function for just appending those logs to the database and aggregating them. So here we're taking that data frame and then we're just going to use that database engine we created and aggregate our logs. We're just saying if it exists, so aggregated logs is a table, uh, we're just going to append it to that um, and just set index false so we don't, it doesn't automatically create an index for it. So then what we'll do to actually put these functions into action is we define our main function here. And then we're going to define here this empty logs array. So that's how there, that logs array comes that was referenced in that function. Then what we'll do is, and this is going to be a few different things at once, so I'll walk you through it. Uh, we're going to say basically say try while true. Consumer is going to pull our uh, topic, so the topic that was set previously when we created that object, uh, with a timeout of 1.0 seconds. So every one second, it's going to pull that for any messages. If message is none, then continue. So just basically stop and go um, and you know retry in another second. Otherwise, if message contains an error, then what we're going to do is use this Kafka exception to actually uh, get the error, um, partition it, and then make it available down here to our law to be stored in that logs data frame. So here we're setting, uh, we're basically just saying, hey, if this is equal to one of those exceptions, then continue. Otherwise, if it's not equal to a known exception that we can then parse, just print the actual raw error um, and then break. So it'll throw a different error here. Then log, here we're going to load from that JSON file of this message value that was emitted from that topic, decode it into the standard UTF-8 format. And then we're gonna store that clean log just under this clean log object. Then here, we're just appending that clean log to our logs array, so just, you know, this, Every time a new uh, log is generated, just to keep appending it to the array. And then every time that that logs uh, reaches over, or the length of that logs array reaches over 100, it then process it. So what we're doing here is kind of batch processing in tandem with stream processing, where instead of waiting for, or sorry, instead of processing and storing each 
log as it's generated, which just would become, is, it's not unheard of, but it's pretty computationally inefficient. We're just gonna say, hey, every time 100 error logs are generated, then aggregate them and save them into this backend database and go through this process of, you know, turning them into a data frame, processing them, um, and, you know, only filtering out the error messages back into that backend. Obviously, if you have really critical fraud detection workflows where you want to be alerted uh, every time uh, a single you know, error message occurs or there's any kind of breakage, this probably wouldn't be a good, well suited. But this is more for saying, hey, I want to just get a broad view of exactly what's happening, um, you know, what errors are potentially being generated in my environment and helping you have kind of a soft monitoring system. Now, just to have us the ability to kind of just say, hey, keyboard interrupt, if I just want to force it to do this, have it cancel this process, it'll then uh, process, it'll then consume and process all the remaining logs. If you turn it off, it won't just lose any logs that are still yet to be processed. This will then aggregate them to DB and close the uh, consumer uh, object here. So basically close the listener and have it no longer listen. Um, and that's, that's really it. That's all you have to do to set up a really clean log aggregation workflow. Um, you know, obviously focus more on the consumer side of things. So I just wanted to show you the first part just to show you kind of a cool way to fake a producer on your local machine. But the real cool object is in this consumer script. So I hope you find this helpful. I hope you find it useful. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.